and Bunnings trade. Well, g'day punters. Now, we all know it by now. Bet with mates, one of the best betting features you can find. It just makes betting together so, so much easier. And the best part of it, you don't just have to do it for your singles, your race singles, your NBL single games, overs, unders. You could put your mates multi in there together. I'll tell you what, there's plenty of sport on the menu coming up. We've got the footy going. The Perth Wildcats are about to win the minor premiership. I reckon that's your free tip for this one to chuck into your mates multi. But of course, maybe my swans to win in there as well. Plenty of different options, as I said before. Betting together has never been so easy than it has with Bet With Mates. And the best part, you can even rate your mates' tips with emojis out there. I know which ones I'd be using. Enjoy and gamble responsibly. I'm never off my grind. I'm always on time. I'm ahead of the game. I'm first place. I'm in my prime. Hard work that pays off. I pay dues. I'm paid off. Cross me, get crossed off. I'm so fresh. I'm so raw. Go hard like a day. Everybody right around the nation, this is the Hungry Jacks NBL Thursday night. And that young man has a lot of eyeballs on him, as does his French teammate Hugo Besson. This is going to be fun. Brisbane and New Zealand in Cairns, which is the uniqueness of sport in 2022. I'm Cam Luke, Leonard Copeland, Hall of Famer is here, Liam Santa Maria. Boys, hello to you. Hello, hello Cam. Uh, this should be an interesting one, shouldn't it? It's a bizarre sort of setup there in Cairns. And, and these two teams both really looking for a win. The, the Breakers, bottom of the ladder, of course, lost six of their last seven. But they've been looking pretty good their last couple of games against the Wildcats and Brisbane. Desperate to bounce back from that bad loss to Cairns last week. You thought the ladder, the Amy ladder. Let's have a look at it. These two teams, you probably almost guarantee they may still be mathematically possible to make the four, but they're not going to. But you do have an opportunity. You mentioned New Zealand there, or Liam did. Copes, they're a team that now they're getting some of their players back. You expect them to play a bit better, and they have a sniff to get off the bottom of the Amy ladder. They do. And, and look, when you bring in the guys, Abercrombie, who fires them up, who's your captain, he'll get him going. You pushed uh, Thomas Abercrombie on Sunday. He was really good early. Mm. You look at the Amy schedule. This is going to be fun. Double-headed tonight. Phoenix got to win tomorrow night. Perth and Sydney on Saturday night. Whoa. Melbourne, Illawarra What a big Sunday. weekend, Cam. You know what you can smell? The playoffs. <laughs> right. The playoffs as we head towards what's going to be a good one. Hey, the DoorDash team list on that team, New Zealand. Uh, take it away, Liam Santa Maria, because no Finn Delaney, which adds to the frustration when it comes to injuries. Yeah, he's sitting out with a lower back injury. So Roblo comes into the starting lineup. So they're pretty big. Wetzel and Lowe in that front court. Uh, Peyton Siever's been playing well. Hugo Besson and Usman Jiang, the French connection, uh, big opportunity to impress. There's where they sit in ESPN's latest NBA mock draft for the upcoming draft. 19 for Jiang, 32 for Hugo Besson. And 50% of riding, the, the man responsible for riding that uh, mock draft, Mike Schmitz, ESPN draft expert, is in the building. Along with Jonathan Gavoni, he puts those together and he's made the trip out, travelling around the country. And tonight, he's got a good line of sight on those two young men. We'll and plenty of room as well. He's got yeah, plenty of room. Plenty of room. We'll have a chat to him at halftime. Hey, the DoorDash uh, lineup for the Brisbane Bullets. That was so disappointing on Sunday. Cairns belted them from the opening tip. What do you make of this team and what do you think needs to be done tonight, Copes? Well, led by Patterson, Franks, who's been playing a lot better over the last couple of weeks, but they got Drimmick in there, who, who played great last week, and Kadi coming, who usually comes off the bench, their captain. If those two guys play well, it gives them a chance. That's a DoorDash, start, a DoorDash starting five for DoorDash March Madness. 20% off everything. Use code MADNESS. And these are two teams that had a huge amount of raps on them coming into the season, Liam Santa Maria. And for a million different reasons, have failed to fire. But pride is a big part of why you play well this time of year. Yeah, for sure. Both of them trying to get a, a good finish to the year, some momentum. And of course, you know, guys are looking to impress. A bunch of these guys are going to be coming off contract. Teams are assessing where they sit. And then for some of these young guys, like Jiang, Besson, we didn't mention Tom Digba, the next star 
for the Bullets. A guy like Robert Franks, who's trying to impress and get back to the NBA next season, there's still heaps to play for. Copes, I, I don't know how many times you actually were in this situation late in the season. You had a great, successful career. But when, when, when the season is done, and we, we sit here and we talk about playing for a new contract and playing for pride, but how actually hard is it to do as a pro basketballer? It's hard because you expect to win. You want to win. And when you start the season, you put that team together, you expect to win. And when things don't go well, then you've got to motivate yourself. You've got to realize that, look, I still got to eat. So I got to go out here and play, play hard night in and night out. You know what I mean? And that's the way it is. Who's going to win? Oh, you, you asking me? You yeah, asking, no, I'm asking both of you. I'm you, gonna, you sit on the fence. I'm not Mark. sitting on the fence Good. tonight. <laughs> I'm going with the New Zealand Breakers. Yeah, I'm going with the Breakers as well. Yanni Wetzel, he tore the bullets up the one time he's played in this season. And we're away at Cairns Convention Center on a Thursday night. First game of the doubleheader. Here's Busson. Bozon, like Joy says. Yes, Bozon, Abercrombie. Started well on Sunday, was really aggressive off the tip, and likewise at tonight. And fifth game, back from injury, and uh, geez, it was a long time for him waiting to get involved and in, back involved in this NBL 22, watching his team lose a whole bunch of games. So, And he would have been sitting on that sideline itching to play. For sure. And we, we forget about how athletic he is, you know, and how good he was as a player, so... Good to see him back on the floor. And so much of those early season defensive struggles that New Zealand had can be almost, well, equated to the fact that this man was sitting on the sideline during that time as he nails the second. Of course, they played a classic only 10 days ago in overtime against Perth, and they were really good in RAC Arena in the loss on Sunday. Brisbane coming in almost polar opposite. And after getting down 20 in the first quarter, Against Cairns. That man got fouled out on Sunday. Can't nail his first as Lamar and there's Wetzel already cleaning glass. I think they had four guys fouled out in that game, didn't they? They did. Well, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Low three. Got it. And this is not the start Brisbane wanted, considering what went down in the first two, ten minutes on Sunday. And that play is set up by Peyton Seaver, who has been playing really well. Five or more assists in his last seven games in a row. Franks. Here's Kadee. Salt got an early foul trouble. We didn't see him again on Sunday after too early. Goes to work there. And this is what Drimmick does. I, I'd love to see him go to work tonight. I mean, Basson's a very good player, but he's young. And Drimmick's been there and done that. Patterson no good, low even worse. <laughs> Lost it for a split second in the lights as he has a chuckle. He hit him in the wrong spot, his yeah. hands. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the pass from Siva, just pick and roll action. Rob Lowe ready to catch and shoot, and he made a meal of it down the other end. Great, Great pass. pass. Great pass. There's Salt battling under Dave. Havoc Crombie was the first one. A couple of other breakers tried in the end. Jack Salt was able to get it home after a great pass from Drimmick. Little two-man game. Basson. Franks reaches in, gives away his first of the night. And they're the little cheap ones. When you talk about Cope's four players fouling out, Robert Franks is one of them. These little cheapies. The ones and you, you can't give away. You yep. can't give these away that early. What are you going to do? What are you going to do that far outside the basket? Sit down and guard him. Siva, pocket pass. Wetzel, nice friendly rim at Cairns. He's able to get it to go, and he's in rare form. And he is playing very, very well. And, uh, geez, as I said before, he, he torched Brisbane back in round six. Gave him a career-high 27 points. Single coverage down low, and he went to work. Franks over Wetzel. Short. Liam, was the decision for Wetzel to leave Southeast Melbourne his, or was it theirs? Oh, no, his. Yeah, free agent. New Zealand came strong. Offer on the table from the Phoenix, but three years. Back in his home country team. Because, because, because I love him. He, he's, one yeah. of the, he's one of the toughest big men in this league. Mm -hmm. He can flat out play. And he's a kid still. Yeah. He's only second year pro. There's Kadee right at low who said no. And again, New Zealand up to the task defensively. Siva wants to push right at Patterson. Gets around him. 
like he wasn't even standing there, gets all the way to the bucket. And it's an eight-point lead. And again, Brisbane find themselves in an early hole only a couple of minutes into this one. Well, this is what happened for the Bullets last week against the Taipans. Thus, the early timeout from James Duncan. Block down one end from Wetzel. And then the breakers are off to the races. Siva inside out with the left. Right to the rim. Very little resistance from the Bullets. And James Duncan wants to talk about it. Sluggish start, and James Duncan went troppo. He stood up in the first time out on Sunday. He's sitting down. Let's have a listen. All right, mid on ball. We said no pocket passes. Get your hand in there. Make force the kick out, and then we close out. Force us to do extra work, extra rotations. That's what we want. Right here, PB3, press break, and then let's go uh, two down. Yeah, let's go two down. Punch yeah, okay, if they get fucked up, I'm pushing. These people can't move. Yeah. Here we go. Come hey, on. Go, man. Let's turn it up. Oh, it's up three. One, two, three. Right. Hey, let's turn it up. Talk to them, bro. So this has been a big issue for the Bulls, not just last game, but all season long. They've had more slow starts than any other team this season. They've been behind by double figures at quarter time, a league high five times. And uh, James Duncan, just quietly, is getting sick of it. <laughs> and so am I. <laughs> what do you do, Cam? <laughs> what do you do to fix that? Well, I don't know. It, it, it seems like a lack of intensity off the tip, Copes. What happens in pre-game? Does something have to differ in the, the hour or the, the day before? Yeah, I think, honestly, you start another five. I mean, you can't get any worse. You, you let these guys know that it's not working. Dremick a little short. Little. Wetzel to speed everyone down four. That's oh too easy. And that would even annoy James Duncan tenfold. And, and Straight out of a timeout and a transition bucket, the lead is 10. And it's the layups. You know, right to the rim, off the bounce, off the cart. Open three for low to begin the game. There's that defense by Abercrombie. Pokes it away from Patterson. Wetzel finds Basson. Good look, long. This is dangerous for Brisbane because... You, you have another bad game like they did last week. It's easy to give up. And some of these guys start giving up. And it's, it's, it's not good. Well, James Duncan flipped his, his starting lineup a little bit coming in this one. You mentioned Copes off the top. Anthony Drimmick getting rewarded for how hard he went about things last week. He had a really good game. Spark off the bench, so he's starting. And he's made an early sub here. Jack Salt out. Big Lou in. Good pass in the end. Able oh. to get it to go. Drimmick felt he should have got another one from the foul line. Just on five seconds, too. Just under. 4.99, I reckon it might have been. Besson guarded by Patterson. Single figure on the shot clock. Goes away from the Wetzel screen. Wow. He just goes straight past wow. Lou like he's standing still again. And Brisbane's ability to stop New Zealand currently non-existent. I've seen that happening when, before he got the ball. Kidding me? Maybe go to a zone. I do something different. Because right now they're scoring at will. Franks fades away over Abercrombie. Tough. Made it look easy. Couple of possessions in the row, in a row that we've got a Brisbane bucket. Now they're going to get a stop at the other end. Siva, Abercrombie. Now will Brisbane try and push? They will through Franks. Nice little professional foul there by Peyton Siva. Big Lou made a, uh, a mistake on the scout here with Yanni Wetzel, so pick and pop. But Wetzel doesn't want to shoot it. He's only shot it once this season. Big Lou just needs to sit down, stay in front. The big fella's all over the rim. Uh. Eight-point lead halfway through. Quarter number one. Hungry Jacks NBL double header for your Thursday. Here's Patterson. Going to work. Got to where he wanted in the end. Did it with ease. And now they're starting to string some buckets together here, Brisbane. Found themselves down double figures early. Got it back to six. Usman Jeng in for his first action. Abercrombie returns the favour. Yes, he does. He looks good, doesn't he? 
He does. They're a different team when he's on the floor. And that could be said for the better part of last decade. Patterson. And that's an offensive foul on Lamar. We know he fouled out on Sunday in the loss to Cairns. They're trying to go at that matchup. Patterson's going to come out now, but is he coming out? He's staying in. They want to go at that matchup in the block. He's trying to overpower him, and Abercrombie slides his feet, takes the contact. That's an easy call. Looks like, too, sometimes Brisbane can be so um, focused on just getting the two guys shots. I think we need to, I need Jason needs to take more shots. Dremont needs to take more shots to loosen it up a little bit. As Franks just picks the pocket, Ooh. and with the left, he's able to get it to go straight down the hatch. He's got four. Low right back at him. Three's better than two, not on this occasion. Frank's feeling it. Wow. Got it. He right over it. Rob Lowe. Looks to the bench and says, now I'm feeling good. He's got seven. And this is a much better second half of this first quarter. Be smart and stay out of foul trouble. Good pass. Great pass. Yanni Wetzel, the benefactor again. Randall's able to find him. And Wetzel's got 10 in this first quarter. Five of five from the field. And getting to the rim where everyone's. Great pass. Not sure that was the cleanest of dunks by the big boy, but he was able to get it to go. All day long. The big boy. Lose first points. Game just starting to open up a little bit. That's an outstanding pass and one. And Yanni Wetzel is getting it where he wants. And when he gets it there, he is unstoppable. Well, That's the damn one, It's deja vu. We just roll the tape from when they played earlier in the season. And Wetzel was on the floor. He missed their last matchup when Brisbane got the win. But when he was out there earlier, uh, they just couldn't guard these actions. Pick and roll, they're getting eaten up. The bullets, they're doing some eating down the other end in similar fashion, but Wetzel well and truly cashing in. Six for six. Has not missed from the field. He's got 13 on the board. Big start, Yanni Wetzel. Preps it for his first minutes. We're close to quarter time. I don't know, if I'm the NBA scout, I'm looking at Wetzel. And with good reason. Kade uses the loose screen, pulls up. That's long. Wetzel says, I'll just do everything. He's got five boards already. Might be a little, might have only been the two, might be reading the wrong number. Either way, he's dominating the game. And at the other end, I can tell you for certain, that's a three from Peyton Seaver. He's got five in the lead back to nine. in outside to Kadee, no good. Lou couldn't get it over Wetzel on the putback. In the last couple of possessions, in the last minute or so, he's been all New Zealand. Wide open, Randall got it, and they are getting really good looks from the three-point line. And again, that's able to drop down. They're three of six from beyond the arc, and the lead, funnily enough, quickly back out to 12. It's a clinic. It is a clinic. They, everything they run. And the double team causes a turnover. They got lucky, Brisbane. Franks didn't want to give it up. That's why. He said, no, nah, Digba, I'll take this. Takes a little contact. He's got nine, and that was a desperately needed bucket. Well, Franks is having a bit of fun in the open court with that left hand. Threw it down a few possessions back, and then here, sneaks in, takes it away, keeps it on the left, away from the defense. Finishes through the contact. Okay, one shot. Would you have given that up, Copes? I probably would have. Uh, he, probably. You know, he made that. He had to make that, though. He didn't. Come on over here and sit next to me, pal. He made it, and the free throw as well. He's in the double figures. And pressure up the floor. Well, the New Zealand are fairly comfortable breaking it. Nine-point lead for New Zealand. Cam, you mentioned before Tom Digba into the game. He's played these last few minutes. I like it from James Duncan. On, on a night like tonight, Mike Schmitz, the draft expert in the building, getting 
a look at these guys in person. Hasn't been getting this early kind of run, usually Digba, but it's giving him a chance early in this one. So get out there, see what you can do. Put your skills on display. Siva. Tries to break down Krebs in the end. KD was able to get away with it and the way they push. And again, a very smart professional foul. That won't count from KD, although it probably looked pretty on Instagram later. But smart professional foul by McDowell White because the full head of steam was with KD in the bullets. Seventy-eight percent from the field for the breakers, fifty percent from the three-point line. Has helped them set up a nine-point lead into the last minute of the first quarter. KD takes a bump. Randall argues the point. Referee makes it fairly clear what mistake he made. And now Jason KD will go to the foul line for a couple. As good as New Zealand look, Brisbane aren't out of this game. They just got to play better defense. They can get hot like any other team. But they gotta, they got to work on that pick-and-roll defense. Well, they gave up 32 in the opening quarter against Cairns last Sunday. And James Duncan, Labar Patterson, they went into the post-game presser and they talked about that first quarter. They talked about their first quarter D and how everyone didn't come in switched on, ready to compete. So it'll be all kinds of frustration from that coaching staff and across that roster that collectively they haven't brought it to tip this one off. Seven-point lead. Randall. That's McDowell White hands it off. Perfectly. Great pass. Galloway's able to get that. Little jump hook to go. He's just on the court for the first time. His first bucket. Lead is nine. Five second shot clock differential here. So the break is in theory. We'll get another crack. Kadee. Back to the foul line for the veteran. And this is the kind of Jason Kadee you were talking about. Coach, put the ball in his hands, let him snake off those ball screens, makes good reads, and he's been playing really well. Double figure points in six straight games with Nathan Sobey sitting on the sideline. And I reckon they look good when he's in those situations initiating the offense. Absolutely. Ten seconds on the clock. So New Zealand, plenty of time to make something work here to end the first quarter. Passon's the man currently. You can see the clock on your screen. Trying to go to work. Kid v Kid. And pretty good job by Tom Digba there. Basson didn't really get a good shot. And it ends the first 10 minutes at the Cairns Convention Centre with the breakers up by seven. Don't go anywhere. Second quarter on the other side of this.
Hungry Jacks NBL, first quarter was all about Yanni Wetzel. That's how the game started. And Franks is doing his bit. He's into double figures as well. But New Zealand have been outstanding again. Had a great first quarter against Perth on Sunday. Have continued it this evening. That right there is Lachlan. He loves Brisbane Bullets and everything they do. Maybe not the first quarter as much, but uh, he is. Well, the family, his mum Amanda Blank, is the winner of the $50 Kmart gift card. So congratulations, Amanda. And Lockie, I hope the Bullets lift in his second quarter for you. Liam, 10 minutes in the books. What would you make of it? Well, it's rough defensive first quarter for the Bullets as Tom Digba tries to make something happen in the paint. Can't get it, and they win it back. They gave up. 75% from the field That's crazy. for the breakers. They were New Zealand were 9 of 10 from two-point territory in that first term. Layups, little floaters around the rim, way too easy. Coach, who are these slow starts on? Is it the coaching staff for Brisbane? Is it the players? Is it a combination? It's a combination, but let me tell you something. When you let a team shoot 75% from the field, I don't care what the coach is running, you have to take it personally. I got my man, you guard, You have to sit down and guard somebody because they're not going to beat anybody if you're shooting 75% from the field. It's not going to happen. Well, Will McDowell-White just got 100% of a three as he's able to get it to go. The shot clock running down. Dick Bar. Got some early burn as Liam spoke about in that first quarter and he's been a bit more aggressive tonight, Liam. I like it. Shoot your shot. He knows why he's out there, why he's getting this early run. And he's come in with an aggressive mindset. What guarded by Deng wants to break him down, step back. Almost identical shot to the one he just did. Cut, copy, paste, repeat, six straight points for Will McDowell. Why? I know he can get hot. When he gets going, look out. Leads at 11. Using the Frank screen. Now he's got to go to work on another next star in Jeng. Does get himself a shot he liked. Unfortunately, no good. Now it's Jeng the other way. Wants the push. Kicks it outside. Randall all the way to the bucket. Little double clutch. That'll count on the reverse. Everything's coming up New Zealand. Everything they run just looks great. They, they, they look like a different team now, don't they? Mm-hmm. Well, McDowell White is feeling it. Three of four from long range. Their last game, he's two of two already in this one. This is the Will McDowell-White from earlier in the season. He was making it rain. And then Jason Randall along the baseline. Ding Ding needs to wall up, make that tougher. But how was the hang time in the finish? Wow. Three-point play. Straight up. Nice little quarterback pass. That was a nice look as Brisbane are able to catch New Zealand napping and right then Randall who shot the foul shot was the guy that actually contested the layup. Just look like they're letting them score so they can get the ball and try to score themselves. That never works. You gotta stop somebody. You gotta play some deep. Jing. They are feeling it. They're almost unconscious. They're 80% from the field. They're 67% from the three-point line. They've got 41 points. And we're just over two and a half minutes into the second quarter. One of the games. We'd love to play in. Addison got us to go. Let's get it and go, man. Well, they got their confidence up in that first quarter with all those layups. I mean, Yanni Wetzel's six from six from the field. He's calling his jets on the bench right now. But five of those are layups. One's a little floater from in front of the rim. And now they've taken it beyond three-point territory. And everybody's feeling good. Abbott Crombie couldn't get it to go. Jing, that'll be an offensive foul as he ran over Tanner Kreps after the offensive board. Here's the offensive foul from Jing. It was the pull-up triple a few possessions ago. That smooth stroke on display. Isaiah Moss in for his first minutes. Patterson. Take the bump. Tried to get it to go with a little body language. Couldn't. He'll go to the foul line for a couple. You, you mentioned that. Change the starting five up. Copes. Isaiah Moss started on Sunday. Mm. We haven't seen him until three-minute mark of the second quarter. So there has been some tinkering. Anthony Drimmick came in today after that... Uh, 
really slow start for the Bullets on Sunday against Cairns that essentially lost them the game. But right now, we are talking about this shot chart, which is going nuts, a soda stream shot chart. Wow. Have a look at that. Look inside the paint. <laughs> is that crazy? Jeez. Well, that's a beautiful thing. That's a team that's just feeling good. The combination of just the confidence growing within the group and the defense not really applying too much resistance. And here's how they got themselves going. A lot of Yanni Wetzel coming down the lane. He was ripping it off the defensive glass. He was taking guys off the bounce there. He attacked Robert Franks. And then blocking shots. Blocking shots and then running the lane, getting ahead of the defense, getting right to the rim. Uh, just a little bit of everything. There he sucked Big Lou into the shot fake and threw it down with authority. Big first quarter from Yanni Wetzel, and uh, he's feeling very good. And he's a fun player to watch. He is. He, he is. doesn't force anything no, either. He doesn't you know, he, at all. He lets the game come to him. And that's, you know, now again, that's why I thought about why in the hell would Southeast Melbourne let him go, but obviously he decided to leave, leave but he's one of the guys I'm looking to hold on to. He's very good. Coming in, Tom. Yeah, well, they tried. Three, three year Three deal, shots. good money, home team. Like, there was a lot of things yeah. going in the other direction. Sometimes you got to find Watch a little up. bit more money. <laughs> Is that what you said to Lindsay Gaze oh. over the years? Come on, mate. I got to play for free. Don't even try to back in the day. I was, didn't have money back then. It's been so long. <laughs> Lamar's got six, last four points for Brisbane. Wetzel back onto the floor. Randall. <laughs> he barely raised an eyebrow. Isaiah Moss just went flying back past. He took a left hand dribble to the left and knocked down yet another three. There's seven of 11 from the three point line, coach. But he didn't dribble that far. He didn't create any space. He just moved a little bit. Didn't have to. Play some D, man. Come on now. KD. Patterson, too easy really in the end. Got around McDowell White. Lamar Patterson being a lot more aggressive in his second quarter. He's up to eight. Mm. Going to work. Getting to his spots. Patterson, eight points, three assists. Getting things done offensively, but it's down here. They're having all kinds of trouble. They got lucky there, the bullets. They exert so much energy trying to get, trying to come back that, that it hurts them at the end. Can they string a couple of buckets together? KD, step back over McDowell. White is good. Nine for Jason KD, and the lead is nine. McDowell White, couple of threes early in this quarter. Wetzel. Try to move that ball. At some point, though, Cope, someone has to have a look at the basket. They good. turned a couple down there. Well, don't worry about it. We've spoken about that Brisbane D, but good help from Jason Kadi. That possession along the baseline. Great D, Wetzel. White has two this quarter. Got away with one there, Brisbane. McDowell White, wide open. Now it's Kadir. That'll be a hand check. Abercrombie. Offensive foul. Is that offensive foul? Hold him. Ward him off. Here's the shot fake from Kadir. Oh, McDowell White up in the air. Got some open space. His first triple of the game. Good call, Copes. Randall, float up. Patterson couldn't hold on to it. He'll stay with New Zealand. I guess the positive thing about Brisbane is they keep going. They keep going. They, they, they'll, they're good enough to get back in this game. He's got to play better defense. Lead at nine. CBD inbound. Randall is starting to feel it. He's in a couple in this quarter as well. He's up to 12, and the lead is 12. We've spoken about him. He needed to pick his game up, didn't he? Kadee. 
Long three, no good. It's good to see Chase and Randall out there getting buckets. It's coming off consecutive donuts. The breakers import, but 12 first half points and counting right here. Hasn't seemed to hurt his confidence. He's still shooting it in rhythm and with the confidence. Here's Poisson talking about a guy who knows how to get hot. Wants to stare down Franks. Wants to show him a little bit. Siva. Probably had an open lane. Tried to find Wetzel and will go the other way after turnover number five for the breakers. And it leads to a wide open stuff for the big fella who's got 12 on the night. Basson. No luck. Abercrombie in the end, broken play. Wow. Ended up with a finger roll that came off the iron. This is an ugly minute. That was a nice pass, and that was a better finish as well. Great Someone needed to do something in this minute, Copes, to pump it up. First it was KD, and Franks with a possible three-point play. Absolutely. That's a great pass. And again, I said Brisbane is still in this game. A couple of good stops on the other end, come down, good baskets on the offensive end, and they give themselves a chance. Man, he just makes smart reads on players like that, Jason Kiddie. Mm. You know, just knows his guy has the height advantage, doesn't try to get fancy with it, just put it up, let the big fella go get it. Because I've been around for 770 games, I have some feeling for the game. I have some feeling for the game. Don't grab him by the arm, and if he pushes you around, I'll pull the foul. Touche. There you go. Last five points for Brisbane. Here's Siva. Randall turned that one down. Shot clock's down the seven. Siva doesn't. And that's a really good decision by Peyton Siva. He's got eight, and we're seeing the best of Peyton Seaver at the moment as well, as he's able to string some games together after a disjointed injury erupted, interrupted start. Moss short, followed his own ball, and gives the Bullets a second chance. What a pass again! Wow, Jason. Nice pass. He reads, you are, he reads the game so well. And again, they're in the game now. Deng with the throwdown. Here's Basson. Wetzel took his moment, and in the end, they just had to foul him and foul him hard because they knew what would happen if they didn't. But he's earned a couple of foul shots. Well, he just presents such a great target on those actions. Wetzel, Siva, Basson, really, they're all finding him down there as Franks looks a little shook up. And here's the pass down the other end. Back cut from Deng. Quick reaction from Kadi, the lead pass for the finish. You spoke about Peyton Siva. Cam, we talked about his dimes in recent times, five plus in seven straight games, but he's also been shooting the heck out of it, including tonight now. It's 11 from 18 from three over his last four. Wow. When you roll into a league like the NBL, and you got injuries early, and he got injured in preseason, mm -hmm. he had that horribly interrupted preparation to the season and it just must make life it seems like it's stating the obvious copes but life's so much easier when you have a bit more confidence in your body and you feel more in rhythm game in game out absolutely playing healthy is way better than playing hurt <laughs> that's put that, simple. Is put that, that simple? on a put that on a t-shirt hey is that simple <laughs> They do say the greatest ability is availability. That's right. And that's something he wasn't able to offer a great deal of times in the first half of the year. Well, I tell you, he is going to be available in the free agent market. Mm. And that's a guy I think the breakers, you know, should really look to bring back. It was a little rocky, as you say, to begin with, Cam. And he, he has had a lot of niggling injuries, not just this year, but over the last bunch of years in his career. But high-level player, and we're seeing that in this last month of the season. Madison spins on Randall and gets it to go. That's such a wide body. It's hard to get around him. He uses his body very well. 
He's on that boxer in that paint. 10 for Lamar. Abercrombie. They continue to be hot. 10 threes in the first half. At 67%. Kadee. He got a foul line. The only Mitchell did a good job to make sure no possible three-point play. Oh boy. That was that was way too easy from the break as Densham is losing his mind on the sideline here. The frustration apparent. Now the breakers had the bullets scrambling defensively, and it led to that open look for Abercrombie. And then down the other end, could he just stroll down the sideline, turn the corner, got right to the rim. Been a couple of situations like that tonight after a score, one after a foul shot where Jason kadee has been all very easily able to get to the to the bucket. He's six of six from the foul line. He's got 11 on the night. As we get into the last 70 seconds of the first half, Besson tries to split the double team. That's a lot of points for, for 20 minutes. <laughs> I reckon the first team to play his defense might win this one, Cam. Well, they did this on Sunday as well in the first half against Perth and gave them an opportunity in RAC Arena. And then you just see, you mentioned it a couple of times, Coach. They just seem like a different team. The team that we watched earlier in the year for a million different reasons. Mm. But they seem like a different team. Maybe it's seeing the end of the season and knowing they get to go back to New Zealand and live some type of normal life. I don't know, but... Or guys are getting healthy. Yeah. Abercrombie's back. No doubt. Silver's playing better. Absolutely. What they haven't done, the breakers yet, though, is shore up their defense. Their offense is looking beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at the way they're, they're tearing it up and they're getting good looks. But they're still giving up high scores and at high percentages. The, the top three shooting percentages in a game this season from any team, all three of them have been against the Breakers and in the last few weeks. And the, the top one, of course, last week against Perth, who shot 56.3%. So they're giving up a lot of open looks and a lot of layups. And even in this first half, they're on track to give up 50. Just their offense is super hot. You'd like to think, though, it, get, it will get better with Abercrombie in there because he's known for his defense. Mm -hmm. He's their, their captain. I'm sure he knows in order for them to win anything, they got to play defense. Lead at nine. Horrible pass. And now Wetzel, what does he do? He just should wait for the troops. He does. But Besson says, I'll just catch and shoot. Can't get it to go. Franks, oh, nice pass. In the end, probably too nice. Ding wasn't ready for it, and New Zealand have an opportunity. There's about a 10 second difference between the shot and game clock. This shouldn't be the last shot of the half. Receiver. Been talking about him. Finds Besson, who stepped on the end line or the sideline. He's not having a great one, is he? No, he's not. A well, chance here for the Bullets to go into the half down single digits. They can score here. Got down by 15 at one stage in this first half. So that would be a nice little hurdle to get over as you head into the sheds. Again, it's that first quarter, Liam, that just let him down. Kadee, guarded by Wedgel. That's tough, and that's going to be a walk Whoa. on the shuffle back step back as Jason Kadee searched for the three point line. He's a little surprised. You obviously haven't seen James Harding play, have they? <laughs> that didn't look like a walk to me. He, he... That is two, still two seconds on the clock. Let's have a look. Just, just did he lift that left pivot foot? I'm not sure he did. He left the heel. The heel came up. Yeah. I've seen him. Far worse. As Michael Allen just told James Duncan just then, it's the travels are not reviewable. 
Only the foul calls, so they just got to get on with it. Some frustration too that he nailed the three. Mm. It always adds to it. Has been an entertaining first half, though, of course. Hungry Jacks NBL double-headed tonight to kick-start the round. We're starting here, New Zealand and Brisbane, before we head to the west. Ooh. Perth. And the Jack Jumpers to go at it. And they go at it, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looking forward to that one. The Wildcats are, they are rolling right now. Top two scorers in the league. Eight more home games. Is it eight more? Mm -hmm. Eight more. Wow. Little, and little tinkering with the roster going and on behind the scenes. Perhaps. Some good news today. 50% upgraded to 75% mm -hmm. capacity from the end of the month. So it's getting harder for every team to go on. It is. There. Here we go. Wetzel. Count it. I think it was late. Oh. It wouldn't have mattered. Besson, no good anyway. But uh, has ended what has been a really good first half for New Zealand in Cairns in front of no fans against Brisbane. But we don't even find that weird anymore because this is the world we live in That's with right. everything that goes on. Nine-point lead. We've got a very special halftime guest not too far away. We're going to get to courtside in a split second as well to have a chat to a man who's having a great night. In fact, he's ready now. Yanni Wetzel, big first half, mate. Uh, playing some good basketball. And the, I guess the challenge is to do it in the second half because your form in the last couple of weeks as a team has been really good and fun to watch. Yeah, exactly. We've had great first halves these last few games. It's awesome to get everyone back on the court. Missing Finn today, but with the influx of Tom and Hugo and Will, it feels great to have a good unit out there. we just got to be better than the second half and defensively. Yoni, you, you were 6-for-6 six six in the first quarter. You only got one shot in that second quarter. What's going on, pal? Can you go down and talk to the yeah, coach? Tell me to get you the ball. Yeah, they started choking a little bit. The kickouts were there. Uh, we just got to hit some shots, but right now it's the defensive end. Um, they got way too many points, 40-something, so um, we got to shut down defensively and, and hopefully come out with this one. Yanni, Mike Schmidt's in the building. Uh, no doubt everyone aware. Uh, Usman, Hugo, how do you keep those young guys focused in a situation like this? Yeah, they're mature guys, honestly, for their age. So they haven't made a big deal about it. They've gone about their normal routine and just trying to put on a show for whoever's in, in, in town. Yanni, loving your work, mate. Great first half. Good luck in the second. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Yanni Wetzel, 15 points in the first half, 6 of 6 in the first quarter. And he's playing great basketball, as are the New Zealand Breakers, who lead at the half by 11. That was nice. Usman Jing, the next star goes whack. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more on the other side of this.
Hungry Jack's halftime highlights. And it's been fun, especially if you're a Yanni Wetzel or New Zealand Breakers fan, because Yanni did whatever he wanted in the first quarter. In fact, pretty much whatever he wanted to do, Leonard Copeland, he did it. And they have been in scintillating form from the three-point line as well. But it hasn't been all New Zealand because Brisbane, unlike Sunday, have been able to keep in touch. That man's in the double figures. McDowell White's hit a couple as well. But this has been really fun to watch. That's right, Cam. And, and look, Yanni Wexel started off on fire. They couldn't, the pick and roll, they couldn't guard it. Look, and he, he was, like you said, six for six in that first quarter. He got going, he got them going. Um, and the one thing I like about their team is they move the ball around. They passed up 14 assists. Ten threes made. That's going to be tough to beat by anybody. Anderson, stand there for you there, Liam. Oh, well, they're just flowing offensively. The breakers really, aren't they? Getting whatever they want. Their second highest halftime score of the season. And the worrying sign for the Bullets. Teams that have put 50 or more on them at, in the first half this season are undefeated. And look at the shooting percentages, especially for the breakers. I mean, they're on track for 60, 60, 90 shooting clips, essentially, which is outrageous. Uh, meantime, the Bullets been shooting it pretty well themselves, but um, some turnovers for them and some... Um, some easy buckets for the breakers is the result of this 11-point lead. All right, plenty of eyeballs on this particular game. On the league... In general, Next Star's program has gone to a whole new level and it seems like every single game there's someone new coming out here to check it out, be from a team or from somewhere like ESPN. And Mike Smith is the best in the business. And when he tweeted yesterday that he was in town, the whole NBL Twitter blew up. Mike, uh, welcome. Welcome to Australia. Thanks for having me. Cairns, beautiful place. Uh, so <laughs> happy to be here. Great weather and can't complain. Got some good basketball here as well. All right. I know you got a short trip. I know you've seen some young guns tonight, but who are you exactly here to see? Yeah, I think Usman Jang is really the headliner. You know, when teams are really intrigued with a guy, 6'10", long arms, can handle the ball, can pass. We saw the step back three there in the first half, shooting only 21% from three on the season. But his upside is sky high when you talk about an 18-year-old who has a lot of versatility and can do multiple things with the ball in his hands. So... You know, he's really the, the first round type of guy, I think, out of this group. And then you have Hugo Besson, you know, the Frenchman, 6'5". He's had some monster games, you know, at least five games scoring 20 points or more this season. Really impressive at 20 years old. Hasn't had a great half so far, but... We've seen him make shots. We saw the Perth game. You know, he was absolutely bananas in the third quarter. So I've been really impressed with him as well. I've been able to check out, you know, practice. I'm going to sit down with the guys tomorrow, break down some film. So those are certainly, you know, I think the two best NBA prospects in this entire NBL. Mike, Liam Santa Maria here. Welcome to the country. Uh, tell us a little bit about your schedule. Quick trip. I imagine you're going to get around and, and who else you'll be taking a bit of a look at. Yeah, so I'm actually making the trip to Perth tomorrow. So I'll, I'll make the long, I think, four or five hour flight out there. And, um, you know, I want to see Luke Travers. I've actually never seen him in person. So, you know, when you talk about a guy who's 6'7", six, 6'8", six, um, versatile, can handle the ball, pass, you know, very tough defensively. I want to figure out, you know, his shooting. I think that's kind of the, the swing skill for him, projecting him to the next level. So I'm going to see Perth, Sydney. Then I'm going to take the red eye out to Melbourne. So if, I, <laughs> if you see me looking a little little bit <laughs> sleepy at, at that game uh, that's why but I want to check in on you know Ariel Hookporty um, I've been following him since he was you know 15 years old and He's make, taken a huge step this year. I mean, he's really bought in. He's playing incredibly hard. You know, he's improved, I think, his motor, his energy. It's much more consistent than it's been in the past. And obviously, a seven-footer who moves like that uh, and blocks shots, you know, you always want to check in and, and see his progression. And then I'm going to end in Canberra, I believe, is, is how you say it. Mm -hmm. Correct yeah. me. If, but I'm going to go see the NBA Global Academy as well and, and check in. And also spend some time with Dyson Daniels. I think he's out here. So I'm going to be able to break down some film with him as well. So short trip but fitting a lot in it and really excited to be here. Mike Leonard Copeland here. Everyone's excited for you to be here. Tell us about your job though. Tell us how you got started and, and what you have to do when you're here. Yeah I'm here to basically uncover the next great prospects. You know my, my process is really you know evaluating these guys since they're 15, 16 years old. So talking about Usman, um, you know I, I've been evaluating him since he was 15. I remember him at the U16 European Championships and um, you know so I do that abroad and I do that in the States as well. You know whether it's high school prospects, I'm going to college games, I'm really going all over the world to try to figure out you know who can play in the NBA. So on, on top of that I'm also an assistant coach with the Uganda National 
national team, so I'll spend some time out in Africa as well. So a lot of frequent flyer miles, uh, just just trying to figure out who can play basketball. But it, it's it's a dream job for me. I'm able to watch the games, break down film with these guys, really get to know them, and then see them progress and hopefully make it at the highest level. Mike, we love you being here. In fact, we love you so much, we actually closed the stadium. So I hope you're enjoying it. The only person who didn't enjoy it, mate. So enjoy it. Thank you. Good luck. Enjoy the next couple of days, and we'll talk soon. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. There we go. Talking big about some of these young guns in the NBL. Very quick break. Second half, including that man, Hugo Basson, is next. That man, Yanni Wetzel's had a big first half. He's a big reason why these New Zealand Breakers lead by 11. As we get ready to go at the Cairns Convention Centre. Let me tell you something. If I'm six for seven, I'm not going to be selfish, but I'm going to nudge the coach and say, look, it was working great in the first quarter when you got me the ball. <laughs> so you're going to be selfish, but you're going to try and cover it with... Well, a little bit. Six no. for seven. Come it, on. It is a good point. There's Abercrombie. He uses the... Wetzel screen and can't nail the first shot of the second half. Jason's just so crafty, isn't he? Well, it was an outstanding look. Patterson could knock it down. And then it has been a whistle. Looks like uh, Patterson and Wetzel got hooked up. Second foul by Patterson. He was one of those four guys that fouled out last game. They gave up a season high 31 fouls. Across that loss to the Taipans, the Bullets. Need to tidy it up. Basson. What's a little running start on Franks? 
What a pass to Wetzel. He bobbled at the last second, ended up getting it back. Abercrombie. So hot in the first half. They were 10-17 from the three-point line, and it continues to start the second half. And the lead is 14 into the first minute of the third quarter. How much better does he make them look at? I mean, even just the little things. The defense, the talk, knocking down the shots. Patterson, silky smooth. All the class in the world, he's got 12. Seaver. Now Patterson will push. He's going to try and back the Son down and get to where he wants, which he did. Go to there. He's just using where he's got the advantage. Patterson, he had Wetzel switched onto him, so he faces up, crosses him over, gets to the rim. And then here, he finds the youngster, Bassons in front of him. So he so, said, you know what? I'm going to turn my back. Back you in and overpower you to the rim. And there's nothing you can do without, with all that muscle. <laughs> KD. Jeremy, and it sounds sweet. In the sound effects microphone, nothing but net. He's got five, and that lead is back to nine. The last five points for the Bullets. I'd love to see Drummond get going, though. Just for his own confidence. Low, two, easy. Peyton Seaman has carved him up, got two feet in the paint, kicked it outside to the big man. He started the game with a three. That's his second of the night. He's on track for double-figure dimes. Peyton Seaman, two quick ones to begin this third quarter. Ten points, six assists. Baseline. And a combined Baseline. 12 of 20 from long range for the breakers. Red hot from three-point territory. And this happened on Sunday. Every time Brisbane mounted any type of challenge to Cairns, they were quite easily able to say no. And this is what's happened tonight. New Zealand, every single time Brisbane make a mini run, New Zealand are able to get through their stuff, get a look and put another bunch of points on the board. They're, they're using the ball really well. And when they drive and kick, the defense is sinking. So when you sink and kick that ball out, the guys wide open, they're knocking the shots down. That's why it looks so, so good. They're 12 or 20 from the three-point line. They're 22 of, what's that, 35 overall. Trimmy, tough, tough, tough. Usman G just looks at the sky and says, what more do you want me to do? That's and young fella, there probably isn't anything else you could do. No, nah, nothing you could do about that. That's a good shot. But Jeremy, Jeremy can get going. Give you that help that they need. Jing. Lamar Patterson says, I'll look after this. Uses the salt screen, he gets all the way oh. to the bucket, couldn't finish it. Jack Salt tried to lit it, but it didn't matter anyway. But Lamar Patterson, when he's in this type of aggressive mood, Liam Santa Maria, Brisbane are a better team, and for anyone who likes watching basketball, it's a lot more enjoyable. Well, there's no doubt about that. It's third personal on Yanni Wetzel, so that's a, a good result for the breakers. I just might be able to play him off the floor with some, some foul trouble. Oh, I, Personally, I think the bullets look best when that ball is getting through hands. Sometimes they can get a little Lamar Patterson centric and he gets an early touch in the possession and it doesn't really find anyone else. But late in shot clocks, for sure. Yeah. You want the ball going back to him and he can make good reads and, and get you a bucket, set someone up. But this is a team all season long, whenever the ball's getting... That's why I like it when Jason Cadiz right, snaking off those ball screens because he makes good reads. Finds his teammates open and the ball pops. Absolutely. I agree 100%. I don't know about you, Liam, but the more you see that ball go in the rim, the harder you play on defense. <laughs> We've all been there, right? Well, I haven't, but uh, I'll take you word for it. Okay. <laughs> Did 
you only have to make one shot to play more defense than you're playing days copes or I, like two or three? I was a defensive stop. Yeah. yeah, come on. I, I remember I played with a guy called Andrew Days. Smart man who can't spell defense. <laughs> Kadee <laughs> picks the receiver pass and leads it to Frank. He just throws it down. Semi transition for the Bullets. That was nice. Leads back at seven. Last five at Brisbane. And this is what we speak about. Every time there's a run, New Zealand able to say no. Well, they're asking a bit of a question again right here. The Bullets. Receiver miss kept alive. Low. Don't foul. Shot clock's down to five. steve has got to get to work. And he couldn't oh. get it to go. And now Drimic will push. Oh, what a nice pass, pass. Yes. Patterson, too easy. Lovely. Straight down the guts of the key. You got a game, fellas. No real help defense. The lead is back to five. And Leonard Copeland, that is correct. That is correct. You got a game. <laughs> and just as you said, Copes, the Bullets, they get a couple of buckets and all of a sudden, moving their feet on deep. Scrambling the closeouts, the turnovers, and then here's Kadee in the open floor just setting up Franks. Can I ask a down, question? Is Franks left-handed? You know, Franks is having that Larry Bird game where he just comes in and decides <laughs> to play left-handed for a night. And then, and then after that, we start chucking threes and they run. Okay, they run and they get fast break uh, layup because you cannot run, they can run. Okay, so come on, let's step it up. Let's, let's hit back. Um, let's go, uh, you're at the four now, right? Um, let's go thumb, thumb up. Okay, just thumb up. Come second side, come back to the middle. We're not respecting wicks, we're not flipping wicks. Okay, we're not flipping. We're going and we're going down. Okay, let's start with that. Keep going, you're looking for second side aggressive. If you have something, if not, back to the middle. Come on, come on. Well, there you heard the timeout from Dan Shamir, just looking for his team to respond and then getting them organized on offense. And you saw the, the numbers come up, top dime droppers tonight. Jason Kadee, he's three more assists off a double-double, 11 points, seven assists. Just the, he's got three turnovers, a couple of steals, having himself another really productive ball game. Pressure up the floor, fairly comfortably dealt with by New Zealand. Yanni Wetzel, on the bench, he's got three fouls. This man, Randall, had a good first half as well. Siva. Stagnant. Not what Dan Shamir would have wanted out of a timeout. And now Brisbane can try and extend what has been a seven. Straight run by them. Couldn't the first time, but the second time they can't either. Come on, Salt. Big fella, I wanted that for you. <laughs> and Randall the other end. It's going to go the other way. You heard it there. Kadee was there. Randall asking maybe we should look at it. Let's have a look at this. Oh, here's Jack Salt. Said, you know what, I'm going to take my time, power, power back up. And just didn't get the lift. Down the other end, the attack from Randall. But Kadee, he just held the spot. He did. didn't react, left or right. Took it down the numbers, got the call. Turnover number eight to the breakers on the night. Great pass. Great pass. Little two-man game. Ding Ding just ran straight to the bucket. He's playing a lot better, Ding Ding. Nine straight, lead is back to three. And now the big challenge for New Zealand. Basson just inside the three-point line. He's able to get it to go. Let's we'll see if he can start to get going. That's first his first basket. First it? basket, he was 0 for 4 from the field. And now he's on the board. Franks from 26 foot. Long shot, long rebound. Drimmick is able to get it. Receiver fouls Franks. It'll stay on the ground. That's five fouls. Is it? Five team fouls? Yep. He's doing a good job moving without the ball tonight. 
Robert Franks settled for the triple there. As you could hear Dan Shamir in the background when he had it isolated, saying, no left, no left. It's in the scouting report. He wants to use that left hand. So he settled for the triple, but then quick to cut to the basket, get it back, get to the strike. tell if the offensive player breaks his plate. I don't know. That's an honest answer. One. Second is good. Nice night again for Franks. He's got 18. McDowell White back into the game. Here's Besson. Just hit his first bucket moments ago. It's a breakdown. Ding Ding gets all the way to the bucket. That's going to be a block. Ooh, wow. And Drimmick not happy. Felt he was there. Hugo Besson to the foul line. Drimmick desperately pleading. James Duncan to that use his coach's review. Case. I think he might have a case. Let's see. You know what? I reckon he's still sliding a little to his right. Uh, Ever so slightly. Yeah, there yeah, it is, right there. A little bit. Yeah, we're we play center. We are challenging the blocking foul. Yellow so you three. can't slip under the airborne player. That's one thing. But I think he, you know, his feet were in that spot before Besson took off. But just on the slow motion when they really slow it down, looked like his momentum was still bringing him a little to the right. Anthony Drimmick. I reckon you might be right. That shot, it might only be centimetres in it, right there. Oh, fellas, that's tight. That's tough. That's your challenge is unsuccessful. Couldn't have been that tough, Coach. It took four seconds. On yellow three for a block and foul, moving underneath the shooter. Brisbane lose their coach's challenge and we'll be charged right. for timeout. So we restart with two shots. Unsuccessfully moved under the airborne shooter. Drimmick didn't like that, did he? No, he, he did not. Mm. But of course, he's, boy, he's lost his calling for a challenge privilege. Yeah. Anthony mm. Drimmick at this yeah. point. Yep. Yeah. You've got to. But you would think as a player, though, that you had a pretty good case there because he, he was in, he was there. He just moved a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard. Unsuccessful. It is. It's hard to right, find the right balance, of course. Yeah, shots, of course. Guys. James Duncan being in Cairns, you should grab a coffee with Adam Ford tomorrow, who's the he's best the, in the business oh, at he's it. the challenge oh. king. Eight in a row. Mm -hmm. Wow. You just jinxed him. <laughs> no, no, no. He took a challenge heat check the other day. I know, he did. First, <laughs> first four, three or four in the... Yeah, he went three or four last game. You know what? Took he streak to eight. He is so hot right now. He's like Hansel. He got one of his players back into the game after he thought he'd found out. <laughs> <laughs> Hugo Besson nails both. He's got four in his quarter, four on the night as he tries to get going. The lead is six. Drimmick pulls up. That makes him feel a little bit better. That's the Drimmick we know. He can get hot. He's in the double figures. He's got a couple of threes, both in his quarter. And it's back to a one possession game. Besson, pocket pass, Galloway. And now the bullets with a chance. Ding Ding get held. We spoke about this last week about Anthony Drimmick. With, with Nathan Sobey out of lineup, he brings an energy and mm. an aggression that I think at times otherwise isn't there in this this bullet's Ross. You know, Kadi and Patterson and Franks and Krebs, all these guys, ding, ding, they play with such an, an even level of emotion, whereas Drimmick has that streak about him. He does. Where he wants to get after it. Seems like, though, it's been more defensively this year than it than, than was last year because we, we didn't have Franks. Franks is taking up the offensive side of things now, but you're right, when, he, when he's out there and he's fired up, it brings that energy to the rest of the team. Second one is good. going to stay with New Zealand. Defensive intensity is lifted here from Brisbane. You're right. Offense leads the defense. Maybe more so in effort than anything else. Mm. 
One point game. New Zealand had double figure lead for a lot of this. McDowell White, no good. Three bullets. Raffle it. And now a chance for Brisbane to take the lead. Krebs loses it. Dives on the floor. That'll be a jump possession arrow will go to Brisbane. One of those possessions where they, they really never got any advantage. The bullets because the breakers with their switches, switching all of those picks, especially on the ball. Uh, you've got to try and eventually find a mismatch and find a way to get an advantage and go at it. Kadee, shot block, oh, in and out. One coach yells one side, the other coach yells two sides. <laughs> And that's what New Zealand needs to do. Go back to Yanni Watson. Go back to what worked for them in the first quarter. What got them that big lead. So what they haven't looked at a lot is just is finding him in the block. Yeah. That was all off the, the pick and roll and as a threat off those actions in the first half. But if they're gonna play him single coverage in the block, you've got to give him some looks. That's big. Usman Jang. We heard Mike Smith at halftime talk about only 21% from the three-point line. He nailed that step back in the first half. He did a similar thing there. He's got six points on the night. The lead is for Drew Can he reply? He can't. Ding, ding. Great offensive board. That'll count. Yanni Wetzel in trying to play defense. Hit the net. You can't get up and challenge the call. Sit down, please. Didn't see that. Sit down, please. <laughs> so that affected. The handshake did not affect Thank the play. You. That affected the bus. You don't get to. You don't get to do that. You don't get to do that. Oh, yeah, you can't touch that. That's a, that's a clear, easy call, to mate. Hand goes through the net and the rim as the offensive player is shooting it. Basket counts. Wetzel, I tried to post him up. Deng did a really good job of making it uncomfortable for him and he bobbled it out. Turnover number nine for the Breakers. Brisbane have a chance to take the lead. Wow. Well, it won't happen on that possession. Franks is arguing it's not off his leg. That's not the role. There's a lot of begging in there. There <laughs> is. Begging for a lot of desperate players trying to <laughs> hold possession of the pill. He's up putting his hands in there, Yanni Wetz. has got the three fouls. Basson passes out. Abercrombie! He's been special tonight, hasn't he? He's knocked down every wide open shot he's had. 12 on the night. 14th three-pointer for the Breakers. Tough by Franks. Over Wetzel has those three fouls kept alive. And Brisbane get another opportunity through offensive rebound number seven. And they cough it up. Basson forces his way desperately to the bucket and gets himself a couple of freebies to boot. That's a grown man move there. Just knew he had the defender scrambling a little bit. Steps across, takes the contact, puts the onus on the official. Once again, the Breakers answering the call. Thank you. One. Six in the quarter for Basson. That's what he's got for the game. The lead is seven. A couple of changes being swung. I reckon the Patterson would have fell down on that one when he got that call. But a two second differential between a shot and game clock. On. 
Plenty of time now for Brisbane. Through Drimmy. Stares down Abercrombie, steps over and back and couldn't hit it to go. So it wasn't the prettiest of last minutes, but New Zealand will be happy with it. Because they scored the last five. Quarter to go in Cairns. It's New Zealand by seven. Welcome back. Cairns Convention Centre, the site for tonight's Hungry Jacks NBL. The first of the double headers. And it's been interesting. New Zealand have had double figure lead for a lot of the game. Brisbane are much better in the third quarter, had their opportunities, but hot, sharp shooting, particularly from that man, has the Breakers seven points in front. Much better quarter, though, for Brisbane, defensively especially. They kept the Breakers to 18 after giving up 57 in that first half. And some offensive rebounds as well. They've got eight offensive rebounds now. The Bullets, which is helping their cause. Basson, nothing but far no Queensland Air. Great pass. Too easy. And it's a third left-hand dunk for Franks tonight where he's been uncontested at the rim. Jason Kadee just doing whatever he wants. Sets it up on a platter. He's got eight assists. And the lead's back to five. Don't they look better offensively anyway? Moving that ball around, ball is not sticking. Jason's making smart passes and finding the open guy. Shot clock. 27. Round the Hold. six. That's going to be on Ding. Holding Wetzel. And this is... These are the kind of defensive issues I was talking about, about the breakers. I mean, they're not careful. All this great offensive work that they've done over the course, especially that first half, will get undone in this final quarter if they give up easy looks like that. Jen couldn't find Wetzel. And Brisbane have done a great job of controlling Wetzel. I mean, one shot in two and a half quarters. Two very easy buckets to start this last quarter for the Bullets at the rim. Dan Shamir nearly... He wants, he wants nearly, to get in the game. He could nearly dribble it down himself he's from where he's standing. to inject himself into the ball game. He's saying, I bet you I can get the ball to Wetzel. <laughs> Start in the ball. Start on the post. <laughs> and even, even if Wetzel doesn't shoot it, let him touch it, though, so he feels like he's a part of it. Right now, he's not even... He's not even touching the ball. And, and I'm not saying that because he, scored six, he was six for six. But, man, he's their best player. Go through him. He's smart enough where if he gets it and there's a double team, he'll pass it out to the right guy. 
Let him touch it. You guys have never been there, so I guess you wouldn't know. I'm big, <laughs> no, throwing those post entries. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you, 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 we haven't seen him in the block. No. It's all been rolls to the rim, and he's been making a big presence of himself in that regard. But when he had that career high 27 against Brisbane in round six, a lot of post catches. Mm. Single coverage, Robert Franks, uh, Jack Sold at times, and he just had Tyrell Harrison, who's injured right now, and they just couldn't handle the big fella down there. And, you, and they never threw the double. So the breakers kept scoring and they went on and won that game. And right. I'm with you, Copes. It would be it makes sense to give him a couple of looks down there. See how the defense reacts. Floor wipers, as you can see in the background, is doing their best work. Referees getting involved, always good. Big thumbs up. Let's get this back to action. Three-point lead for New Zealand. There it is. There's, and there's the double team. Jing has two. Oh, kept alive. Oh, wow. Five, push, go. There you go. So that's a fourth foul on Yanni Wetzel. Plucked out of nowhere. Wetzel shoving the back. Wow. Challenge the call. Yes. I'm asking. Challenge the call. Yes. Are you serious? Don't. 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 Don't be silly. Don't be silly. Don't be silly here. I'm going to challenge the call. In place then. Please go into your timeout. Go. Or it'll be a technical foul. Thank you. That will shut you up straight away, son. Three point lead for New Zealand 75 72. We aren't really sure if this is a challenge or not. Gonna find out now, aren't we? Because Dan Shamir never said, I want to challenge you. If you make the challenge, you will lose it. The foul is on 10. Keep your time out, but keep your challenge. No way. Shush. That is the call from the replay. But this is, is it? Uh, is it uh... Yes, the foul on 10 will count. No foul on 5. You will have your time out, but you will keep your so, challenge. What do you mean I have my time out? Yeah, you said... Uh, it's not... A, uh, yeah. I keep it. You keep... No, no, you don't keep the time out. You... Uh, you lose the time out. You have to have the time out. out. What are you talking about? I challenge a foul on five. <laughs> and, uh, you, you will retain your timeout. Retain my timeout. The foul is on ten blue. Okay, keep okay, call is here. On five. Okay, for the post <laughs> yeah. Three point lead for the breakers. It's been an interesting minute or so. The referees checked the review centre. The foul wasn't on Yanni Wetzel. It was on Tom Abercrombie. The referees have then said. And the review was on ten. Here we go. So it was called on the wrong person. The review was to check who the foul was on. The referee said to Dan Shamir, do not challenge it. It's on Abercrombie. So essentially, Yanni Wetzel doesn't have four. It's okay. still a foul on New Zealand. Dan Shamir is still questioning if he can challenge something that the referees have said, do not challenge. Dan, don't argue. I'm being told, don't argue with me. Did you look at this? I don't look at this. Dan, listen to me, please, without talking. <laughs> Replay centre have reviewed the play for the ball. Dan, and you, he got Dan, away. enough. Yes, and your time, and your time out. And there you go. He's kept his challenge and his time out. There you go. Class is in session. We haven't seen the we haven't seen the replay, but we back in the review centre in. Dan Shamir is still questioning. He got he got away with this because he was going to challenge. So let me get this straight. Michael is telling him, don't challenge it. You will lose that challenge. Yes. It's a little bit of a. Three-point lead for the breakers. That I can tell you. Wetzel only has the three, so he remains out there. And on cue, he's able to get a rebound after a big defensive stop by the breakers. Jeng. McDowell White's got a couple of threes, turns down that. This time's a floater. No good. Picks, 
Big last seven and a half minutes. Patterson wants to break down Wetzel. Wetzel did a pretty good job. Now Jeng will push. He's got Busson for help. He just lays it in with the left. Wasn't much that he could do on a two on one. And New Zealand copes every time Brisbane have an opportunity to tie it up or take the lead. New Zealand have an answer, but this time it's Ding Ding who said, let's try it again. Playing a lot better. Go to work, Ding Ding. Ding Ding's got 13 points off the bench, five for five from the field. Three rebounds. It's his third straight game with 12 or more, Ding Ding. Basson, Abercrombie. Batted out by Wetzel. And now another one of those opportunities for Brisbane to tie it up or even take the lead. We can hear James Duncan in the background, and he's he's trying to bang home that same point we've been talking about. Move the ball. The bullets. It does get a little sticky from time to time. They've got to get it through hands. Hold on, ball. 25 pink. It's on Basson. Pink, 25. Yes. Holding. Stop ball. KD had an outstanding night. Great little pass again this time. Franks, that'll count. And after numerous attempts to try and reclaim the lead, Brisbane with a chance through a Robert Franks free throw to do that. I'm really impressed with this guy's left hand. I, I say that because. Man. Yeah, it's been on display tonight for Robert Franks. Beautiful pass from Jason Kiddie. He brings up his ninth assist of the ball game. And for Franks, it's his fifth game in a row with 20 or more points. He's on a heater. And imagine if they didn't give up so many points in the first quarter. They used so much energy fighting back to get it back. And there wow. it is. Wow. Brisbane lead. Just on six and a half minutes to go. Siva back into the game. Basson takes a seat. Great defense. And it leads to an easy layup for Tanner Krebs. Who took it from Siva and the lead is three. Last eight points for Brisbane. Jing, great pass. Wetzel challenged by Franks. But Wetzel was able to clean up his miss and lay it back in. Much needed bucket for the breakers. Only their second field goal of this final quarter. Krebs runs over Siva. What does the referee say? He says offensive foul. Solid, Liam. Solid. Solid. That's solid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good job rotating across there. Siva. Drimmick comes back in. Krebs checks out. One point lead. Fun night. Cairns Convention Center. Hungry Jacks NBL. First of what's a big double header. Wow. This is something a little extra we haven't seen all year from Usman Jeng. Scouts in the house watching right across the world. He's got nine, three or four from the perimeter. And his New Zealand breakers are back in front. Franks beat Wetzel. One on one. Fades away. Can't get it to go. Kept alive, kept alive, kept alive. That's off the leg of Drimmick. Great job, Will McDowell-White. That's the kind of stickiness I'm referring to for the Bullets. Just a little bit too isolation heavy from time to time. And going to continue to play through Jason Kenny. Got an equal career high nine assists right now. Siva. And it's okay to go through your stars. Like you said, move that ball around. With seven seconds to go, get it to one of those one-on-one -on -one guys and let them go to work. 
You saw last week, Kadi had he's brought up his 1,000th career assist. Only active player to be at that mark. Never had double-figure dimes in a game. Wow. Wetzel was double teamed. Jing, is he still feeling it? Wetzel on the rebound, keeps it alive. Randall, three, in and out. And New Zealand had plenty of chances to extend that lead and couldn't. Indy's got a mouse in the house. Patterson stripped by Siva, who just dribbles to a three-point wide open. That's in and out. And offensive rebounds again. Giving extra possessions for the breakers. Randall. Wetzel. He only just very tidily crawled that over the eye, but it does count, and the lead is four. Some very nice playmaking from Randall. These last few possessions, he set up Jeng for that knockdown three, and Wetzel at the cut. Last seven points for New Zealand. Kadi can't change it. Ding, ding. There's that energy you love, Copes. He's tough. And now it's Brisbane with another opportunity. Jeez, last three or four plays just, just not working. You've done all this work to get it back. Just continue to do what you're doing. Siva. Some tired shots out there. Trimming over Jang, nice. got us to go. A little running half sky hook from the veteran. He's got 12 leaders too. We tick under three minutes. Wetzel, great pass, and Jang easy able to throw it down with the two hands. Yanni Wetzel, middle of the key. Drew the attention and Usman Jeng into double figures as well. And a pretty big night for the young Frenchman. He's playing well, isn't he? Shooting the ball well. Playing smart. There's a beautiful pass here from Wetzel. Jeng, good timing along the baseline. Finishes at the rim. Timeout, Brisbane. Well, we uh, stayed at these timeouts. 23 points, eight rebounds for Robert Franks. He five straight 20 plus games. Is that right? Is that the right stat, Liam? That's correct. And well, tonight hasn't been a lot from the perimeter. That's his only knockdown from long range. That's where he's been doing a lot of his work over recent weeks. But he's been active. His left hand has been heavily involved. Heavily. <laughs> in transition. It looks good too, doesn't it? And as he strides down the lane, there he is setting up Ding Ding and getting out and running that middle cylinder. Another nice night from Robert Franks as he leads this Bullets team. Four-point lead. We're under three minutes. Okay, time in, please, guys. And this is something that can happen. Late season, both teams out of playoff action. A little less defense, a little more entertainment when it comes to the scoring copes. Not necessarily a unique game for these end-of-season battles we see in basketball around the world. You know what these what these two teams can do? They can disrupt those top teams because they can go they can go in the, into a home court and beat one of those top teams and hurt them because they're good enough. Jimmy. Wow. Somehow ended up in Frank's hands, and the Brisbane Bullets bench will be very happy it did. Well, there's that threat from long range. He's We're fighting. talking about good play. They got a little lucky, the Bullets. Siva right back at him, can't do it. Kept alive by Yanni Wetzel. Another 14 seconds on the shot clock for the Breakers. Get your hands up. Randall stops, pops, can't hit it. Wetzel again, this time to Franks. Franks really shook up. I think a foul will be on Siva. Oh, 
Randall that was involved and you got a little of that head high contact, Robert Franks. Yeah, man, go down like you. What's up? You got blasted or something. Come on, bro. Get up. <laughs> Six ten. Three hundred pounds. Let's go. Get up and shoot these free throws. Keep on moving, bro. It wasn't quite Brian Conklin on Damian Martin. So no, no, it wasn't. Was it? Might be a bit of blood getting checked out by the team medical staff. Do we need the blood kit? But Pops, do we get the blood kit? We spoke last week about Franks and Law and Patterson. Whoever's recruiting these guys has done a great job. And I think it's Sam McKinnon. You spoke to Sam McKinnon. Yeah, well, definitely Franks and Patterson and, uh, and Law. Law, yeah. Sammy Mack. My, maybe Patterson a couple of years back goes right. goes beyond when he was. But that's quality. That, that's quality, man. Two really good pickups. Franks is an interesting one because you get another look at when he took this one right on the schnoz. But where, where, do we? He's more sort of on the jaw kind of side of the head. There you see him grab right there. Maybe he cut above the eye. But he was. Obviously, the, the Vic Law replacement, right? They got the sense that Law wasn't going to re-sign. They weren't going to be able to get that done. And he signs with the Wildcats. And they quickly pivot towards Robert Franks. It's been a great result. He was right at the very top of that Cairns Taipans import recruiting wow. list. And they had to go in a different direction themselves. So a few NBL clubs had him on their radar. And... Obviously, he has desires to get back to the to the NBA, where he did some good things with the Orlando Magic and that organization. But if, if you're the Bullets, Sam McKinnon and, and co, I mean, I think you've got a good one there in Robert Franks if you could try and get him back. Bit of blood just being cleaned up on the court. Kind of. Exactly. Yeah, Sammy, sign him back, Sammy. Is that a selfie or what is that, Copes? You're a social media user. They just look, he's just looking at you. He's just checking his, <laughs> checking, sure his, checking his eyelashes. Still fine. looks good. Is that contact? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it's just contact, yeah. yeah. All right, we're back. Sure Blood's been that, wiped. Put that left contact in. <laughs> Whatever you do, bro. <laughs> One point lead for the Breakers. Franks, leading scorer in the 9 and 26 on the bench. We're under two minutes. Ding Ding's been great. Go oh, on, Ding Ding! No. Big hit. Continues That's again. Wow. Has not missed tonight. 16 for Ding Ding. Brisbane back in front. Randall stepped into Drimmick and called yeah, offensive. Great job, fellas. Well done. Great defensive stance from the Bullets. We've spoken about Drimmick and the impact he has for this squad. Look at the way he switched on to Wetzel and then he rotated across. Really good effort from the Bullets as a whole and Drimmick in particular. And down this end, Ding Ding copes in a big moment. Just shot it like he, he meant to shoot it. <laughs> six for six from the field. Now we had a turnover off the inbound. Wetzel, men of the room, denied. By number of the bullets. Be smart, get a good, get a good shot. Kadee, three, long. Siva, we're under a minute. Two point bullet lead. Wetzel inside. Kadee had nothing to do once he was sealed. He had the foul. Send the big man to the foul line. Smart play by the breakers. Good job from the big fella. This is the tenth dime for Jason Kenny. Career first high, time? first time in double figure assists and a double double for Jason Kenny. And the Breakers, meanwhile, Wetzel in transition. Here comes Robert Franks, all patched up. Blood jersey in action. Is it the blood jersey? Or he's got his own back. His own back. All right, his own back. Two. And a good read from Peyton Siva as well. Made the simple pass, found the big fella down low. Pressure on these free throws. Go, 
Get up. First one's good. 20 points for Wetzel to go with seven boards. We're all tied up. 88 apiece, 52 seconds. Abercrombie almost had it. He believes it came off the fingertips of Patterson. Referee says we have a look. Great job from Abercrombie. Knows he has the foot speed to keep up with Patterson if he tries to back cut him. So he says, you know what? Let me get up here in the passing lane. They're reviewing it. Abercrombie's asked a couple of times. Not sure if it's uh, hope. Or some type of realistic view on it. You like his chances, Cam? He seems to be fairly confident that they need to be reviewing it. Let's have a look. Uh, no, I think it might have come off Abercrombie. This is probably going to be the best Ooh. angle. He gets that little follow through there with his hand. Wouldn't imagine this. Too much conclusive to overturn, and the bullets take it. Here we go, shot clock down the seven. So they're going to get to work through Lamar Patterson. Ryan and Jeng, who did a pretty good job defensively. And now a big chance through McDowell White. Shot clock is three second differential between that and the game. White guarded by Drimming. Shot clock at seven. He's got to get to work. Step back, way short. Patterson has it. We got five. Lamar looks at the clock for the win. Ooh. We got a little overtime. Close. Wow, he had a good look. It was a long range attempt from Patterson. Oh, he's taking another dribble. Oh. Breakers, meanwhile, wow, didn't get anything really good on that final possession. Didn't get it through hands. Had to settle for a contested triple from McDowell White. We're going to overtime. All tied up at 88. That man, Yanni Wurzel, has 21 on the night, including the two foul shots that tied us up with 50-odd seconds left. It's been fun. It's been up and down. There's been some tired bodies and some tired shots in the fourth quarter. But we're going to need another five minutes to be able to determine who takes this one home. The bullets got to continue to play through Kitty. Yep. That's when they've looked their best offensively as he wheels and deals and gets everybody involved. And when it doesn't get hit Kitty's hands, it, it gets a little individual yep. for that squad. That's got to be the focus for them. And meanwhile, for the breakers, similar down the other end in terms of moving the ball, getting through their stuff. That was the huge hit from Ding Ding. Told Dan Shamir all about it. And then Honey Wetzel stopped and met at the summit, turned away, and this was what they came up with as a potential game winner. And Patterson, a good long look at the, the clock, got to a spot, had a look at it, hard off the back of the iron. Hungry Jacks NBL. Wildcats and the Jack Jumpers only moments away. Second game in 10 days that a really good game of basketball goes to five extra minutes and there's no one in the stands to see it. But I hope wherever you might be around the nation, you're enjoying this one from your couch or at the bar. You're watching it, having a beer or two, Copes, for a Thursday night. Well, cheering on the bullets of the breakers. Some of us drink beer, some of us drink Powerade, <laughs> you know, water. <laughs> well, Franks has got that game high 26, 67% from the field. Meanwhile, Yanni Wetzel just leading the way for the breakers with 21. Got to continue to keep those guys involved. Bullets to kick started. Five extra minutes. 
on a Thursday night in Cairns. Hungry Jacks NBL. Kadee, great pass. Liam Santa Maria called for it. Play through him. He's got a career high assist tonight. And there's another one to start the extra five minutes. It's so right, Liam. Put that ball in Jason's hand. He'll find the open guy. Crumby tried to find Wetzel. They can't review that. Yanni Wetzel pleading. And again, Brisbane go, let's just pass it in. <laughs> Here they go. And he trying to push. And again, credit Anthony Drimmick. Switched onto the big fella, but doesn't just sit behind him and give up. Fights over the top, forces the turnover. Patterson. for three. That's right in the eyeball. The cut eyeball of Robert <laughs> Franks. It does not look like missing. He's 15 on the night. He's solid, man. Haven't they missed that all year? Patterson, ambitious, couldn't get to Kadee, and now it's Siva who will find Abercrombie, who takes it straight at Drimmick. Bit of contact. Referee said play on, and it ends up in the hand of Drimmick. Seaver again. Perfectly red. Couple of steals on a night for Peyton Seaver. Both of them from Lamar Patterson. McDowell White. Three. Long. Wetzel. Second chance opportunity. Wow. And Abbott Crumby takes it. He's on fire. He's got 18. Five triples on the night. And Yanni Wetzel again, give him a point and a half for that. Keeps it alive. Eight boards on the night. And the last six points for Abercrombie. Last six points for the Breakers. Here he is, knocking him down, Abercrombie. Big shots in overtime. The ball finds him. He's ready to fire. And puts the Breakers up four. Meanwhile, the, the turnover's mounting up for the Bullets. They've got 14 right now. And... Patterson's got a game high six of his own. Trimming wants to break down Wetzel. Great D by the big fella. Last couple of possessions for the Bullets. Couple of one on one efforts. Siva for three. Lead stays at four. First overtime on a Thursday night. Patterson, great pass. Franks inside, got to where he wanted to, got deep on Abercrombie, and Patterson was able to serve it up. 28 for Robert Franks. Two point lead. Under two minutes. Abercrombie doesn't know where to go. And that's going to be a jump ball. Once he got onto the ground, he had nowhere to go. The hustle was great, but he, he left himself no avenues to pass. It was a good hustle there from Anthony Jimmy. I really like the defense from Lamar Patterson. He's had some situations where he's been blown by and he picked the spot. Oh, look at Drake. Taken out there from Wetzel as he got on the deck. Possession arrow with New Zealand, so the shot clock doesn't reset. There's three on it. Nice and humid in Cairns, so the floor wipers having to deal with a great deal of sweat. They're up to it again. Thank you. Okay. 
Three on the shot clock. Wow. What a play. What a pass. Oh. And what a miss by Yanni Wetzel. I say that because he makes everything else. He was too wide open. Can you believe that? What a pass. No, I can't believe that. And what a pass by Siva. He's having a nice night himself. KD. Ding, ding. Couldn't hit it. Yanni Wetzel, double double, 21 and 10. Big down White, Wetzel. Abbott Crumbe! Makes it home! When you hunt, you hunt! Wow! Wow! That's what it's there for, says Abbott Crumbe. The lead's five, we're under a minute. Dreaming. Jeez. He, it's his night. He's on fire. Five point lead. New Zealand trying to shut the gate. That's on Patterson. My goodness. Shades of Jesse Wagstaff under the rim there. The out of bounds play set up Wetzel wide open and he missed it. And Abercrombie says, you know what, let me just cash in from downtown. Don't worry, bro, I got you. I got <laughs> Thanks, you. Open. Okay, On a Thursday go. night in far north Queensland. Ready? Get up, get up. Five-point lead. Abercrombie can't hit that one. Seaver keeps it alive. Offensive rebound's been a huge part of second and third opportunities for New Zealand late in this game when their offense dried up a little bit. And again, it gives them a chance. Clock 25.5. Baseline ball for New Zealand. Five point lead, 14 on the shot, 25 on the game. Two, five. Two Automatic foul. Lamar Patterson, moment it came in. Yanni Wetzel to the foul Five line. Foul. They've just lacked the energy, I think, in this overtime period. The boards. A few guys on that squad playing huge minutes in this one as James Duncan just tightened the rotation. Patterson fouls out after 35 minutes with 17 points and seven dimes. And again, we spoke about earlier, when you give up so many points in the first quarter and it's so hard to fight back, you use so much energy that in the fourth quarter or overtime, you don't have it. Yanni Witzel leads at seven. 20 seconds left from Bunnings, Kadee, Long, Franks steps into it, good. Four points of difference, 16 seconds on the game clock. Thirty-one and 11 for Franks. He's been solid all night. That's an NBL career high for Robert Franks, beating the 28 he had against the Wildcats. Remember, early in the season, over there in round three, he's been good. But Tom Abba, Crombie tonight, 6 of 10. From long range, 7 of 13 overall, 21 points. And we've been talking about the punch he gives them defensively, Copes, but at the offensive end, he's been big time tonight. You, have, you put him with Wetzel and Siva at the point, they can play with anybody. It's a shame he didn't. He wasn't around at the beginning of the year because it would have been a much different picture for the New Zealand Rangers. It was much the franchise all-time leader in points scored, Abercrombie. And there's the Soda Stream shot chart. Look, six of ten from long range. Just done a little bit of work inside the arc, and especially in the fourth quarter. Three, I'm going to say three of those triples. Uh, sorry, in overtime, three of those triples in the extra period. Too early on, and then the bank one in a massive moment. 
and the veteran coming up large. Jason, no part of your body comes over the line, okay? okay here we go. 14 on the shot, 16 on the game. You think Brisbane will have to foul pretty quickly? Seaver trying to run away. There you go. Trimmy catches him. But now he'll go to the foul line with Peyton Seaver. We talk about, and we have spoken about players who have found their groove after a sluggish start to the year for whatever reason it might be. For this man, it's been injury, but when he's got a good run at it, the New Zealand team is run a hell of a lot different. And it's leading to much more competitive efforts and Ws as you think they're 12 seconds away from being able to get this one over the bullets. And move off the bottom of the Amy ladder. I think, Liam, you want to check that out. But I think they'll go past Cairns in their sixth win of the year if they hold on. Kreps for three. And that's still not a foregone conclusion because it's back to two. Wow. Let me tell you. Surely. I'm on a dark cloud of me, Copes. Surely we're not talking double, are we? Still five on the clock. They've got to get it in. And here we go, Jake with the steal. Brisbane are going to have a chance. No! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! That's fantastic. Ding Ding has a huge night and has the second biggest play of the evening Whoa. to find Dremick, who hits a 24 oh footer to win the game. I do not want, I do not believe what I just seen. Wow. Coach, talk is through it. I can't believe it. Bad pass. Ding Ding finds Dremick, who's wide open, and he just lets it fly. Nothing but net for the win. <laughs> How amazing was that? They hit three threes in the last 16 seconds. They hit two in the last five. I dark clouded them. They stay at the bottom of the Amy ladder. That man, Robert Franks, he's the footlocker player of the game. This is why you don't miss a game of Hungry Jacks NBL. Even if the teams aren't going to make the playoffs, you have entertainment galore. That was fantastic. We're going to get to a break. I'm going to take a breath. Perth and Tassia next.
Hungry Jack's NBA highlights. This thing went to overtime. Yanni Wetzel, that was in the first quarter where he was dominant. We'll get to Frank Drimmick in a minute. Anthony. Anthony Drimmick as well. I'm so, I, I'm so <laughs> blown away by what's just happened in the last 15 seconds of what was a great game. Abercrombie was unbelievable. That's the footlocker player of the game, Robert Franks. Leonard Copeland. What did we just watch? Not just in the four quarters, but more so in the last five seconds. Some very good basketball. Very good shooting from both teams. Um, you know, Wetzel let him in scoring early, and he had a little help. But Brisbane just kept fighting and kept fighting and kept fighting, and that's the end result. Frank, not Frank. You call, I can call him no, Frank. I know, I know. Hey, Anthony. Anthony Dribbling with a big three. There's the deal. leading scorers, fellas. Wetzel <laughs> and Franks were the standouts. Abercrombie was massive. Uh, and there you see the stats. But he here's the only stat that matters. New Zealand were up seven with 23 seconds left and they lost the game. Wow. That is terrible management. Franks for three, Krebs for three, Drimmick with the game winner and the Bullets win by one. Unbelievable. Amy Ladder. And I, was a, I had said with five seconds ago New Zealand would be off the bottom of it. They would have been. Had they have held on, they didn't. Brisbane, bang, up, they win. What a night. And we're only warming up. Perth and Tassie are next.